Hey guys, it's your truly Kevin Grace. I'm reporting to you from Las Vegas, Nevada at the Davis Memorial Park Cemetery. I'm here to pay my respects to a great blues musician. He was a great guitarist as well. He's also known as the master of the Telecaster. The person I'm talking about is Albert Collins. He had some other nicknames as well, such as the Iceman and the razor blade. Unfortunately, in November uh, of December, uh, November of uh, 1993, he died at age 61 from liver cancer. So um, he's buried here in Las Vegas. Not far away is Sonny Liston's uh, grave as well. He's buried here at the same cemetery. But uh, if you ever get a chance to come out and pay your respects, this cemetery is right by the airport. You can hear the airplanes landing um, right in the background. So. Um, if you ever come out, pay your respects to the Iceman, the master of the Telecaster, the razor blade, Mr. Albert Collins. Hello out there, all you happy people. This is Lonesome George Thurger from the Delaware Destroyers bringing you the message of the blues. This show is coming to you live. And right now we're going to have a conversation with Collins, and that is no other than the master of the Stratocaster. That's what they say. Albert Collins. Thank you. Albert, great to have you with us. My Where pleasure. Where you fly from Los Angeles? No, I'm from San Francisco. Uh -huh. yeah, we're working San in the Bay Area right Pop now. 3,000 miles these guys are coming yeah. to bring, be on the Blue Show. Well, I'm, I'm finishing up my tour on the West Coast. Man. Oh, yeah? I finished up Sunday. You're going back after this? Oh, yes, I got to work tomorrow. I guess, you're gonna, I guess you're gonna try to steal a drummer from me, right? I'm gonna try to steal your drummer. You, 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 you gonna, when are you gonna, when, when, when are these guys gonna learn to stop stealing from George Thurgood? No, I'm just gonna borrow him for a little oh, while. Oh, okay, and yeah, I'll never get him back. <laughs> As you see, Albert, yeah. Albert, Albert and I go back from uh, 1979. We met in England, right. did some shows there. We did a, a film in Germany, and um, we've done shows in Chicago together. He's performed with Thacy Reed and his band, The Icebreakers. Right. And uh, Alligator Records. We'd like to know a little bit about when you were starting out, Albert. Uh, you're from Texas originally, is that right? Yeah, I'm really from, uh, I was born in a little town called Leona, Texas. And I raised up from Houston, Texas from nine years old. And uh, I was influenced by, uh, during this particular time, I wanted to play jazz. And I used to listen to Jimmy Lunsford, Tommy Darcy, Jimmy Darcy. And I started out on piano. Really? And I didn't have too much success with piano, so I had a cousin of mine named Willa Young. Keep tape rolling. Okay, we'll just pick that up when you start talking about being into jazz. Okay, we'll start on that one. Okay. Good. Okay, we're still rolling. Well, I wanted to play jazz, and uh, but I started out on piano. I used to listen to Jimmy Lunsford, um, Tommy Darcy, Jimmy Darcy. Interesting. And uh, my cousin of mine, named Willa Young, taught me how to play guitar. And I had a music teacher used to come over to teach me on piano, with, uh, to teach music, which I don't read music. I read drum music. I can't read no other music but drum music. But anyway, as I went along, I was playing the acoustic. I was influenced by John Lee Hooker when he had that Boogie Chillers. Mm -hmm. And after then, I met up with T-Bone Walker, Gabe Miles Brown, was before Freddie King's time, mm -hmm. and Guitar Slam, oh, I did a lot of All shows. All Texas again. Cats? Well, Guitar Slam was from out of uh, Louisiana. Freddie and uh, yeah. T-Bone? Freddie was, uh, was from Texas. Mm -hmm. T-Bone was from mm -hmm. Texas. And of course, B.B. King, he, you know, he was from out of the, Mississippi there, but he was around during that particular time when he had out three o'clock in the morning. Mm. But I listened to all these guys and I used to play all their records and I said, well, I can identify all of these fellas. So I want to try to identify Albert Collins. Well, you sure have done that. I'm trying. Well, you're doing better than just trying. You met Lightning Hopkins and uh, anything you want to tell us about him? Yeah, Lightning, uh, we used to have the family reunions uh, when I was like, 14 years old, and Lightning used to play on the grounds, like the church grounds, and they had barbecue and all this stuff for all the people for homecoming that haven't been home like five and 10 years. 
And I used to sit and watch him play, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, Lightning was a cousin of mine, and he was raised up through the family. I was kin to all the Hopkins you know, on my mother's side. And I learned a lot from him, you know. He's a great He record. taught me a lot through the world, and it's a great loss. Yeah, but what right. I'm saying is uh, I always do a lot of his stuff sometimes, but I want, pretty soon I'm going to do some on the next LP for a dedication for him. Oh, I love that. I did one dedication for, uh, we did a 45 in Austin, Texas, and uh, with a guy named Hill, uh, we did a uh, 45 for him. But anyway, on my next LP, I'm going to do something for him. I'm looking yeah. forward to that. Yeah, because I always keep in touch with uh, what I call a mom, you know, his wife back in uh, Texas. Yeah. So, uh, if any folks, uh, Albert Collins, I'm telling you, you're going to see something on stage like you've never seen when this guy hits the bandstand. I mean, he makes the Delaware Destroyers look like, uh, I don't know, Come a bunch of now. kids. This guy's, this guy's a burner. When you play now, you play, uh, you play all over the world. I, I know you've, it's kind of places you play. We play, do you find, since you started in the 50s or 60s, whenever you started, you find younger people coming to your shows now and digging the blues? Yeah, I love this. You know, George, you know, can Heat one picked me up in 1968 and took me to California. Really? And uh, they did a lot for me, and all, including Elvin Bishop. Elvin. Yeah, and, uh, Mike Bloomfield and those mm -hmm. guys, you know, Buddy Miles, and also BB at the particular time. And when I we call it the underground, when he got over to the white audience, man, I, I just you know he said, man, don't be nervous, go ahead and play, you know. <laughs> And I, I love these, the, the young white kids to accept my kind of music, you know, because I feel like, you know, blues has, a, has its limits, you know, because I know who I stand, but I love to play it. Mm -hmm. And like when I did the TV show with you in Dortmund, Germany, it was an honor to me. Was it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, was a, that was a great night. I'll never forget it. And so I thought to myself, this is the last time I'm ever going to go on after Albert Collins. I'm never going to make that mistake. Come on now. <laughs> So, Albert, in your travels, your many travels, I know you go all over the world, you're wanted all over the world, demanded. Is there any difference in different countries, different places, how yes. they uh It's a lot of difference um, with the UMP. See, the European people, uh, they study the blues. Uh, at one, in, in the early 60s, uh, a guy named, uh, I'm trying to think his name, but I'll get to it in a minute. But anyway, he used to book all the, the, the spirituals and jazz in Europe before blues. But now, for the last late 60s and early 70s, they start going into the blues and uh, they study about the blues over there. And, and, you know, I think the U.S. people are kind of spoiled to all types of music. And, but these people are like to to uh, American entertainment. So, in other words, it's the involvement in here is a little deeper than in the United States. Right. In your experience? Yeah, my experience, right. Okay. Because uh, I've seen the blues go up and down, you know, the situation. It's, it's been more stronger now than it's ever been, mm. to my knowledge. Yeah, well, I saw it pretty strong that night in Germany when you were playing, and when we played in England. I'll never forget that yeah. night. London, I, yeah, Electric nice. ballroom. And oh, were, yes. That was the first time I ever saw you play. And I walked in. Right. And I wa you, were, you were on stage, and I walked in, and I said, well, who is this guy? I saw you, I said, what? I can't believe this. I said, you know, I said, and it's just, it's a nut, is Chuck Berry visiting here or something? It's, it's a loud, mean, happy guy all at the same time, burning. Because I like a lot of energy on stage. I like to see an entertainer really, really get you know, it. I, I, I like energy, George. Know you, you know, because, uh, you know, blues is, uh, a lot of people when you go out and, you, and they say, oh, it's a blues band tonight. Mm. First thing they think about, oh, I'm going to follow with my beer. I've got my, all my words. But, you know, a lot of people misinterpret the blues because, a millionaire can have the blues like you, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and the point is, is it, it, like I say, it, anybody can have the blues every day. It's just the a frame of mind you, you be thinking how the blues is, is, is performed. But see, my type of music, I like to play the blues, but I like to play where if you want to sit down and enjoy it, if you want to get up and dance, same thing. But a lot of guys play the blues, you know, it, it, it's like the back alley. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I got out of the acoustic blues. I'm into electric blues. I knew that. And I'm also like the rock funk blues. I knew that. Thank you. What, you, you also like it loud. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not hard of hearing either. 
Put you right into the camera, uh, what you just said, what the blues are to you. Okay, what are the blues is like the question. I'll just frame, you can look right at the lens, tell us. It doesn't have to be long, as a matter of fact, short. Right. right. See, the blues is to me, is I like it where it's, it's like a funk and a good rock blues. Not the kind that, you know, you just going to fall over in your beer. Right. Giving a band a hand, ladies and gentlemen. 